What's up, guys? It's Chris from DMGH Podcast. Today we have with us Shiroz Ahmad. Shiroz is a 3 in law school and pursuing a career in hip-hop. If you guys have any passions you guys want to pursue during law school or you're about to go into law school and you're worried about not being able to pursue your passion, well, this is the episode for you. Yo, what's up? What's up, Chris? What's going on? So happy we finally got to do this. We've been talking about it for a while now. Yeah, no, I'm glad. Uh, I see you've been putting work into this podcast all semester, yeah. uh, even longer than that. And I really wanted to support and come show love. And, you know, Chris, Chris is one of my, like, first friends from law school. Yeah. So me and Chris hit it off. We were in all the same classes and stuff. So we just, you know, we knew from day one. And I'm also a, a recording artist. I'm a rapper and singer. I've been making music since, you know, I was like 18. Um, I've done records with guys like Joe Budden. I've worked with Dipset. Um, You know, I've had had DJ Funk Master Flex promote some of my singles before. So I've been around the block for a while. um, And I I actually refer to myself as a musician first before actually a law student because that's just what I consider myself mainly. But um, but also, I don't believe in uh, limiting yourself to one label or title. You know, we're all complex human beings that are not, you know, we can't just label ourselves or pin ourselves to one job title or one, uh, you know, school title, whatever, whatever the case is, whatever your occupation is. So, um, you know, I've been making music for a while and um, I, you know, just put out my first studio album this year. I just come in off signing a, uh, signing a little music record deal. Um, with a company called Equity Distribution, which is uh, owned by Rock Nation, mm-hmm. and so that was that was like a big moment for me this year. And so I've been seeing a lot of uh, a lot of my hard work come into fruition, and uh, you know a lot of my things that I've been putting in work for like in music. It's like you know people think there's just overnight successes, but that doesn't really exist. It's such a yeah. rarity to be an overnight success. Even those people that are considered overnight successes they've been making music for like 10 years pushing the same song for like three four years and it just finally gets on the radio it just finally goes viral online or whatever yeah. um and so now i'm just starting to see with you know the album out that i've been getting a lot of love um a lot of support especially in the law school um so you know uh, that that's a, that's a little bit about me and yeah it's like um messi said once it took 20 years to be overnight success yeah, I think that's like so true, man. Oh, that's it's hundred, and that's like that applies to like any field. You know what I mean? It's like you you can't you can't just have success without putting in the work. Yeah, that that the, that goes without saying. Yeah. You got to put in the work. It so. rarely happens. Rarely, if yeah. ever, does it happen. You know? And even if it does happen, it's like you can't rely on that as yeah. as, as the standard in yeah. any sort of way. That's just you know sometimes luck of the draw. Um, but overall, you gotta you gotta work you gotta work hard if you want to be at the top of the top. You yeah, know? So, yeah. Um. Yeah, so that, that that's how I feel about about in terms of the overnight success thing yeah. and making music and kind of juggling all that. And how did you decide between law school and music? Like, why did you decide to go to law school instead of just pursuing music? So, I mean, so you got to understand the music industry is anything in entertainment. It's a, it's a tough industry. And it's mm-hmm. uh, it's one of those things where you can't necessarily re- rely on it for like a regular income. Right. You yeah. can't. You can't be like you can't just wake up and be like yo I'm gonna be a rapper and pay all my bills. Yeah. You know it doesn't work like that. And even even the guys that are really successful, you know, a, l- a lot of them don't really have money, yeah. right? It's, yeah. it's, it's, they just got the appearance of looking like they got yeah. money. Yeah. So they don't really have it. Um, and a so, lot like rent cars too for like for the videos. Yeah, people or for the people rent media. cars. If th- there's a story like um, I, I don't know how true this is, but I, I recall reading like Fat Joe early in his career used to rent jewelry to make it look like he really had a lot of money. And yeah. maybe it was just a smart business decision. Maybe yeah. he had the money, you know. But yeah. it was just like, all right, well, people want the persona. I'll give them it's an image, right? You yeah. give them an image. It, it, it's an image. And it, it's similar things. You know, I have friends that went into, like, acting and comedy and this and that. And um, it, it's a lot of times you end up working a dead-end job anyway. So my thing was I always wanted to go to school um, because I figured – let me go to school while I'm young and I'm still capable of actually sitting through classes and stuff while I'm still in the routine of the mentality after undergrad. And I, w- I was like, let me go now. Because if, if I decide I want to go to school later after just focusing on solely my music career, then I'm not going to actually do it. Yeah. Right. And so this gives, this gives me options in life. And the other thing was also if you generally, when you create art, um, you don't want to be constricted financially. Mm-hmm. So if, if my music is my only source of income, 
right? Then I'm going to feel pressure to make certain exactly. types of records that I don't want to make because I might be tempted to make a certain type of radio or club record mm-hmm. because I got to pay the bills or I got, I got to pay the mortgage or whatever, yeah. right? And so I never wanted to be in that position. I always wanted to be in a position of power where it's like, you can't tell me what to do. Yeah. I get like a re- like if I was, let's say I was signed to a major label, right? Um, and I signed that deal because... I didn't have money, right? So mm-hmm. I took a, I signed a really bad deal where they give you and, and the way record labels were. And by the way, I've, um, I've uh, I used to my first summer of law school. I worked at Warner Brothers Records um, as the second, as the right hand to the director of business and legal affairs. Mm-hmm. So we have like like Drake's label OVO was like one of my main priorities. So I wrote a lot of their contracts, you know. Mm-hmm. So I worked on those. And I mean, I can't discuss specifics of it, but yeah. in general, like the way that record deals work is, you know, a label gives you an advance, which is basically a loan, right? Yeah. They give you a loan and that loan is, and then they give you a, and that's like your budget also yeah. for your album or your multiple albums. And now what happens is it's the only industry where you take a loan out, pay off the loan with interest. And then you still don't own wow. the, the actual thing, right? It's like, it's like if you paid off your mortgage and now you have a house, and then and the bank is like, no, we really own it, even though it's paid off. Those sound like chains, man. Those sound yeah, like it's slavery, chains. man. It's, it's it's slavery. So that, that's that, crazy, it, it, and it's ridiculous. But you got to understand that the reason people sign those deals, right? And and the actual uh, thing that you own is the master recording, mm-hmm. and that's what the record labels usually own. The artists usually don't get ownership. There's very few artists, usually like big artists, that are in positions of power that are mm-hmm. able to maintain some percentage of ownership or. Uh, you know, and they usually don't own the whole thing. And, you know, it, it, it's basically slavery. But you got to understand if you're coming up from the streets and you're like, well, listen, man, I got yeah. whatever it takes. I'll take any kind of cash up front, yeah. not realizing the long term downfall of it. Yeah. And so now you sign that deal. Um, Now you're trapped in. Yeah. Now, if the label wants, they don't have to put out your music. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or they can delay it and just make your life miserable to the point where if you don't give in to what they want to do, um, you know, you basically can't put out your music and whatever. Yeah. So, and you see a lot of artists get depressed. Like they, they actually legitimately, they, they, they become so uh, sad because they become depressed because they're like, Hey, I'm creating this art. I want to put it out into the world. And now the label has been shelving it for like 12 months. And now they're telling me I can't do this. They tell me I got to look like this or act like that, whatever. Right. And they start controlling your whole life. Yeah. And, um, and I never wanted to be in that position. Yeah. I've always wanted to be in a position of power. Right. So if a label, I'm like, you know, if a label comes to me, I'm like, hey, like, I, I don't need your money. I'm good. Yeah. You know, I'm good over here. Yeah. Like, we can work out some sort of partnership if that's the case where, you know, I maintain my integrity and my ownership and my creative freedom. Yeah. It's freedom. And, that's yeah, what it's it is. Freedom. It's, it's just complete freedom. It's complete freedom. You want to have that common goal. And, and uh, uh, th- there's a line on, on Jay-Z's last album, 444, where he talks, where he says, Y'all still taking advances, huh? Yeah. You know, and, yeah, and be, I know that one. You, that's yeah, a good, that's a good, actually, that song, he talks about real estate too and different yeah. paths to investing because yeah. being able to be financially free or at least in control of your finances gives you a sense of freedom in every single part of your life. Absolutely. And if you look like Jay-Z is like probably one of my biggest inspirations, um, not, not just in terms of as a musician, but in terms of being an entrepreneur and kind of uh, like going into this industry like yo i'm gonna own parts of this industry yeah right and i'm gonna show other people the ropes and he's been doing some great work in the, yeah. in the hip-hop community where he's been you know paying legal fees off for a lot like guys like 21 savage and meek yeah. mill and, and people who've been kind of facing some things so yeah. um i've always wanted to be in a position of power and I, i've been fortunate enough where um you know my parents really kind of stress education and but they also didn't say i couldn't do music or this or that they yeah. encouraged me to do both yeah. um so in that way you were able to kind of uh do law school and pursue this passion of yours right? yeah absolutely and I, w- one of my things is one of my main messages and i and i tell this to a lot of kids coming up who um you know will ask me for advice on like i want to get into the music industry and this and that and my thing is look you you can use your education to benefit your passion yeah. it's not it's not mutually exclusive right yeah. just because you go to school doesn't mean you can't make music or vice versa, right? Like, think about it. If I'm just starting off making music, most likely I'm going to have to either work a job or hustle in the streets yeah. to get some cash flow to pay for a recording studio yeah. and get pay for music videos. Either way, and like you need the money. You need the money, yeah. right? And so while you're in school, it gives you a little buffer, either, you know, um, either you, your education is paid for it through scholarships or you're taking out loans or whatever. So you, you get a little bit of a buffer where it's like you don't have mm-hmm. to work or you can just work a part-time job while yeah. you're in school and whatever, right? Yeah. And so... But if you think about it long, like, cause like, like, 
you know, education costs, uh, that's a whole different discussion, yeah. <laughs> but um, just in the grand scheme of things, right? If you're worried about like a few dollars here and a yeah. few dollars there, you're it not thinking your about- It affects your passion, it affects everything, it affects, right? it affects everything, but you're not thinking about the long term, which is yeah. like, all right. So like in somebody like, in somebody's position like mine, right? I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go to law school, right? Yeah. So I can go to law school, I have my degree, and now it's like, well, you know, I, I don't, I don't need to rely on anybody yeah. or anything, yeah. you know? And so if I want worst case, I can just work as an attorney. Yeah, like that's worst. That. Ca- that's yeah. my worst case situation. Yeah, I could be yeah. an attorney, which is or, an amazing place to be. Yeah. Which I'm like, I'm blessed. Don't get me yeah. wrong. Like, I, I mean, I worked yeah. hard and everything, but I do feel like blessed and like privileged to be in a position yeah. where I could be educated enough to be yeah. able to have that kind of problem. Yeah, right. It's true. Um, so, so why don't you, um, what song do you want to show the audience first? Um, I guess, I guess we can, uh, play, play my intro song. All right, um, let's do it. Which, which, which song is that? It's called 92 Futuristic and it's also the name of the album. And, you know, the song kind of talks about, uh, talks about me going to law school and actually, actually the, the record really talks about me being inspired by somebody like Jay-Z. Yeah. And so the first verse is kind of like, like, you know, uh, me paying respect to Jay-Z. My tongue sharp, went to law school, can't cut it apart I learned it from Hobie Hove, you need a powerful spot Ain't it funny, full circle, I got meetings at the rock Yeah, and this is just the start If I wanna see tomorrow, but I wanna live today Feels like it's 92 now, ain't nobody stop What's up guys, I hope you guys liked that I know uh, that I was excited when Strolls put out his album I uh, ended up telling everyone I knew about it. Gabby has heard pretty much every song on the album oh, yeah. at you, least once. Uh, but yeah, as you were saying, uh, you you decided that going to law school and pursuing music at the same time provide you a freedom that not many people uh, have the opportunity to achieve, and you're yeah. able to do that, right? Yeah, uh, and like just just to give you some context, going back, I, law school is something that I was interested in since I was in high school. And thing is, just when I graduated high school, so I didn't know too many people in the legal field. Like it was just something. I just didn't know anybody in the field, right? Nobody in my family really, um, with the exception of one of my cousins ended up going to law school, but nobody else was in the legal field. And so I was always interested in law just because I thought my skill set of like, you know, I was always good in like English and stuff. I always preferred that to the sciences and whatever. And so I was just always kind of geared to it. I always found it interesting, right? And, uh, but 2010, when I graduated high school is when, when the mark, job market like really mm. crashed and tanked and like everybody was just like, oh, don't go to law school, right? Yeah. Like it's like the worst thing you can do right now. Like people graduating from Columbia law couldn't get jobs and yeah. stuff. So I was like, um, okay, uh, <laughs> if you guys say so, I don't know. Like, what yeah. do I know? I'm just a kid, you know? Yeah. And, um, but I was always interested in it from the point of, I, I really believe knowledge is power. I, I really believe that. And I, and I do feel that if you, my perception was before I started law school, like if I understand the law, it gives me some sort of power. It gives me some sort of knowledge that like people can't mess with me. Yeah. Right. Like I yeah. understand something that you don't and a fundamental thing that governs everything is the law. Right. Yeah. So uh, that, that was like one of the reasons I always wanted to go in. And, you know, um, I've, I've always been driven by like multiple passions. I can't like obviously music is my number one main passion, but it's also, I think, unhealthy to. 24 7 be surrounded by it or yeah. into it right because what ends up happening is it your art starts suffering or whatever you're passionate yeah. about starts suffering because you're not taking a break from it yeah. sometimes you need clarity you need different perspectives you can't see the big picture when you're consistently looking at you know one part of the you right know. exactly if you're in the room you can't see the house right yeah. like so yeah. it's 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 an interesting concept and it also just being around different people with different mindsets opens you up your world perspective right yeah. and when you open up that world perspective then it, it starts benefiting your art. So like for me, like being around people in law school, being around people in different fields, having such, you know, a diverse group of friends and people from all different backgrounds helps me shape my music better. Cause then yeah. I'm like, okay, I know more, there's more things to talk about. There's more ways to view this one thing. So, yeah. um, you see more of the house. Yeah. You see more of the sure. house. Exactly. So like, you know, the further you step back, the more you see the whole thing. So, yeah, you know, law was always something that was interesting to me. So I was, the more you know when i when i was finishing undergrad i was actually pre-med in in, uh, in undergrad i mean i didn't really care i was I was just doing well in my science classes mm-hmm. and it was just something like you know i might as well I, go into that area yeah it was i was yeah. doing well in like my bio and organic chemistry and this and that and i was i was i was doing well and it was just more like i, I really only cared about my music it was just like yeah. but whatever i'll finish i'll figure it out later after undergrad was when i when i was like you know i'm, I'm still doing my music but let me figure out what i want to do education wise 
And, um, you know, I, you know, talked to people in the legal field, um, did like, you know, a small internship. I studied for it, took my LSATs and everything like that. And, you know, and, and it just, everything was heading that direction. Yeah. And what I realized was, okay, well, if, if, if I'm still going to do music, what field can I go into mm-hmm. that's going to supplement this? What's mm-hmm. going to benefit my music, right? Yeah. Rather than take away time from it yeah. only, right? And so um, I figured, look, I, I can go into a lot of things, right? But the legal side, like, like I feel like business, I can learn business. Like, yeah. I, I don't need yeah. a degree for it, right? Yeah. I can go online. I can work somewhere. I can learn under yeah. somebody, right? It's like fundamental. Like, I don't need to get an MBA to know business, no, not right? not at all, yeah. So, but understanding the law will be difficult unless I actually go to law school. Yeah. And and understanding the very like like yeah maybe you can learn some stuff online too it right? teaches but, you how to pay attention to the details which is right. people's which is most people's downfall in the entertainment industry the sports industry yeah. everything yeah and uh the details and and just uh you, you do learn like a new critical lens that you didn't like i think yeah. differently before i started law school yeah right like you i'm, I'm sure oh, you yeah. feel the same way bro i'm always skeptical now yeah i'm always skeptical yeah. like if person tells me something that looks great i assume one they're lying and then second, they're definitely lying. You know yeah, what I mean? Like there's something they're not telling me. You know, <laughs> like, there's you, no way what you're saying is true. It makes you cynical, but yeah. it also does. Um, you start seeing problems like where they m- m- might exist. Yeah. Where it might be like a one percent risk. Yeah. And you're the only one in the room going, "Hey, well, yeah. do we consider this. That, that's do totally we consider true. That hundred percent. Right. Like, I, like I had a, I had an album release party last week, and I was I was just going back and forth with, uh, um, you know, the person that owns the venue, like trying to book, and I'm like, well. Uh, we 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 gotta put we gotta put a clause in there yeah, yeah, that yeah. like in case of the act of God yeah. like this contract is yeah. like you can't hold me liable. For I did something. that for you my wedding. What? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, like my wedding contract, I did that, and there was like you know there's not gonna be like a tornado or anything, right? Yeah. I don't care. Like, I was like just put, just it, put in it, there. it. Yeah, yeah. So, it's like if there isn't, then yeah, you should have no problem putting, putting it, it in there. Right. <laughs> so, but it, but you but it's hard because when we're in that moment, we're just thinking, all right, yeah. protect, protect, protect yeah. ourselves, right? And you from from like a regular person, yeah. they're like. This dude's crazy. Yeah, right? yeah. Like so, Gabby tells me all the time that like, so you, you know me. I'm a really yeah, nice guy. Like yeah. I rarely ever like have an attitude or whatever. Right. Uh, but what I question. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> but like I, I randomly become really, really assertive when we when when you're dealing with money and right. my name. Right. And then like that could be construed as being like, um, I don't know, like a jerk or yeah. something. But like as you know, like you're taught to protect yourself when you're in right, law school. Right. Yeah, and and and. That's something I wanted to learn, right? That's yeah. something I, I was like, I'm a good, not just protect myself, but protect my people and yeah. my family and whatever, right? And so I, I just figured it's law school gives you some good general knowledge, and also figured this is that law impacts every single field, every yeah. single industry is impacted by law. So law is just like a medium, but you might be interested in sports and and, yeah. and do some sports law. You might be, you know, uh, interested in some sort yeah. of business and and or like the automotive industry. Yeah. You want to do law related to that or insurance, whatever yeah. the case, right? So, um. With me, the music thing was like, all right, well, I, the law is something specific I can learn that can really benefit my music oh, yeah. career, right? Because everything is all contracts, right? Everything, record deals, is, it's all contract-based, right? Whether I'm performing at an event, whether I'm getting booked for something, it's all contract-based. Mm-hmm. So I was like, well, if I learn that, who's going to mess with me? Yeah. Right? I'm going to come into the industry with a with a power move, with yeah. a power step coming in. And so that was one of the reasons I went to law school. So it's funny when I... When I um, the first, I think like the first week of law school, and this might have been like right after uh, we had our like MSP orientation. And the first thing I remember, like the first, maybe first or second day of school, I was like, yo, what professor or faculty member in this school no- is related to the music industry, yeah, yeah, like yeah. has worked in it, knows something about it, has a connect in it, whatever. And, um, you know, somebody told me about Professor Kettle. Yeah. Shout out to Professor Kettle. <laughs> yeah. He's the man. Out. Uh, so he, he, somebody that worked in the music industry, comes from a music background, teaches like intellectual property courses at Rutgers Law. And he's somebody I connected with. And what actually happened is the intellectual property clinic took me on as a client um, to help me out with some of my legal work, mm-hmm. uh, just like like trademark, like service marking my name. Yeah. So now if I perform anywhere, you know, Shiroz, you can't, nobody else can pop up with the name Shiroz and start performing places yeah. or start putting music out. Yeah. You know, otherwise they're going to catch, yeah. you know, they're going to catch this case. Right. <laughs> so, so it was like, st- like things like that. And you and, learned how to do it in the process as well. Right. Yeah. And like, you know, you, like I took some of his classes and stuff. Like I took his copyright and trademark class. Actually, actually now I'm part of the intellectual property clinic. So yeah. now I actually work on those kind of things. 
And it, it was cool to learn all that because I was like, what other artist is getting this kind of information? Like nobody, yeah. right? And um, and, and part of it was just like, I just was like, well, I just want to connect with him. I want to yeah. learn stuff. And he's actually the one that got me my uh, my first internship. Yeah. Um, he's the one that really pushed me to do it. And, you know, I, I've had I've had a lot of support from the school in general. Um, a lot of other professors, like Professor Holmes has been like, you know, who's also he's uh, the head of the community and transactional mm-hmm. clinic, which me and you were both part of. Yeah. And, you know, when you talk to people like that who understand what mindset I'm coming in with, like, yeah. I don't necessarily want to practice law. Right. Like yeah. I, I never even coming into law school. It wasn't about, oh, I want to be a lawyer. It was, oh, I want to learn the legal component. Yeah. Right. I want to yeah. un- develop a skill set. Learn how to lawyer not right. become a lawyer right yeah and you know a lot of lawyers what like practice like five years at the most and yeah. then they're out and yeah they go into some so go in house or do something yeah. else or do, compliance yeah do compliance or some sort of consulting or yeah. they just end up like whatever thing they're really passionate about they just like start up a business in that field or work in that field doing something else so um you know i've got a lot of support so when i talk to professors and faculty members and people in the legal field that understand my mindset they're really supportive of the fact that yeah i'm really focused on my music and I, and like whatever i do in school i try to do it right like whenever like we have, we have clients in the legal clinic i try i put in you know quality work or i mm-hmm. try to at least right and so i think people see that and they understand all right well how i'm trying to use the legal field to benefit it, yeah. whatever i'm doing and seeing the kind of support that i get in that and people pushing me like like you know i'll, I'll talk to professor holmes and he's like yeah. he's like well less than your work less than your <laughs> less than your school work i'm more interested yeah, yeah, in yeah. what you're doing on the yeah. on the business side and the, and the yeah. music side and like keep me informed yeah. and so like that kind of stuff drives me and getting support it's and nice because like i think the more su- the more successful people are around you most of the times i feel like they're more willing to support what you're doing because there's no se- sense of, of resentment and stuff right. um but we'll get back to this let's take one more small break what's the next song title uh the next song is called mandarin funk let's do it and, and uh it's, it's, a, it's a dope record just real quick it's it's about i wear mandarin collars which is like my favorite yeah. thing it's a flat like asian style collars and it's to represent not being stuck to that nine to five grind and whatever but we'll, we'll talk about it more dope Woo! see me rocking mandarin collar on my neck they can't handle it i don't do no nine to five i'm different and shorty wanna bounce like she down with it I- down with it, I chill with me, vibe with me, nah nah. Chill with me, vibe with me, nah nah. Chill with me, vibe with me, nah nah. Woo! I feel good today. Jump with the funk, make you notice me. And we're back. So tell us about the song that people just listened to. Yeah, so this song is called uh It's Mandarin Funk. And like I was saying, I wear uh one one of my things is if you're an artist, you should be an artist through and through, and your fashion and your style should reflect that too. So I wear um, I just got really into, I don't know, years ago, I got into, I really love the East Asian style collars, which are just, they're like a flat, uh, they're like either flat or banded collars yeah. called Mandarin collars. And um, it's similar to a lot of like stuff you'll find in like, you know, South Asia too, and in Africa and, and a lot of like the flat mm-hmm. collars is like, it's considered formal over there, right? So, yeah. uh, whereas like over here, it's a traditional, you know, stand up collar, the Oxford collar or whatever with, yeah. a, with, with a tie. And I, I, I don't know, for some reason, I just felt like, even the idea of a tie just feels constricting to me. It's like number one, everybody yeah. does it. Number two, uh, why is that the only thing that's considered like yeah. professional or appropriate? If like I'm going to a wedding or like yeah. a job interview or whatever, right? So I, you know, it was just something that I started, and, and one of the song talks about is um, that I don't work no nine to five. Like one of my things is I don't want to work for anybody long term. I don't want to work a typical nine to five. I don't want to wake up in the morning and look look forward to the weekend yeah like i feel like your tuesday should be as dope as your saturday you should be looking to it the same so if you love what you do that that's the position you're in and so that song is like an inspiration for me and other people that kind of think with that kind of mentality so um that so that's that record man so we just put a fun twist on it it's a like fun funk record it was something new stepping out of the box and um i'm really really happy with how it came out it might be probably my favorite song on the album yeah yeah nice well, I love the the art for it for sure. Yeah. What gave you the idea to kind of have a comic book type of? Uh, this, all of this, this gave me. <laughs> if anybody, if you, well, you guys probably can't see it, but maybe Chris can take a video yeah. tour of his comic book collection later. Yeah. It was all one hundred percent inspired by Chris, <laughs> and Chris and all his comic book collections. Nah, um, 
No, so I'm just so I'm making really like 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 money off this album, right? Uh, like I, I'm assuming, you know. No, no, no. In- inspiration <laughs> isn't uh, isn't uh, copyrightable. As so, Kevin uh, Hart would say, you know, the way my bank account is set, set up, up. And my checking, yeah. and my savings. <laughs> yeah, it's just you know that's just how it is. The way my Venmo and my PayPal, it's just you know sometimes you might see something you might not. not. So what uh, did inspire? So um, I've always been. Uh, I, I mean, I grew up. I was, I was, you know, I'm like a '90s kid. You know what I mean? So I grew up like, like basketball hip-hop comic books video games like yeah. early on like, i was big into comic books i think every 90s kid kind of had that experience i mean yeah. even our cartoons uh you remember that cartoon um oh cousins cousin cousins, skeeter cousin skeeter yeah it was the puppet show yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Like, that was that was the puppet show i think uh, they used biggie's biggie's rap for the intro but yeah, they, so. they yeah um yeah there was a, it was just like all kind of like intertwined you know what i mean and i i grew up like i remember coming home from school and like i couldn't wait to that like prime time like three o'clock television it was like you know you watch like x-men spider-man like magic school buses on gargoyles whatever like all that stuff yeah i was so i was always into like superheroes um i just found it like so cool to um think of basically take like human characteristics and turn them into like an exaggerated Mm -hmm. dope form and and so i was always into comic but i just grew up like my older cousins and stuff were into comic books you know big marvel guy so uh, like spider-man x-men were probably like my two favorite yeah. uh like comics yeah and so when i when i made the album so the album is called 92 futuristic and i actually wanted to capture not only like a 90s hip-hop and r&b music sound um with a futuristic twist to it like mm-hmm. a modern twist to it but i also want to capture the aesthetics and, mm-hmm. the, and the visuals and things that inspire me and so and so comic books um just kind of really like always inspired me just get it's like something you get lost into it gives you like motivation it has like dope yeah. messages in it like you know i can you know i don't have to be superman but like i can admire like certain characteristics of his strength right yeah. or actually i hate superman though he's not one of my favorite characters <laughs> but I, this is the first one that came to yeah, mind yeah, yeah, but yeah. like you know like the flaws in somebody like spider-man is so cool yeah. man he's like a smart nerd that yeah. like all of a sudden he's like fighting crime and i was like the way he's like kind of very humorous reminds me of myself too where i'm yeah. cracking jokes like that and yeah. even in like tense situations and so i don't know like all oh, the superheroes it's just inspiring yeah. man it's just like also just the visuals of it like just seeing like the fighting the action it was always yeah. cool like it's cool colors the in, color in the album yeah. for sure yeah no like, it, uh, and it's and it's really inspired by like that 90s marvel comic yeah. style and, and i actually have to it took me a while to find somebody that could um yeah. that could bring it to life so you know I think like now more than ever, I think hip hop artists are becoming more like comic book characters. Like yeah. people always talk bad about like like hip hop nowadays, but yeah. I think a lot of the positives is being ignored. I mean, I think now more than ever, ever you have hip hop artists actually helping their communities and right. going back to where they came from. I mean, like I love Tupac, I love Biggie, of course, yeah. all those classics, but you kind of rarely saw that in the '90s where they actually went, like went back to communities and and did as much as yeah. a lot of artists are doing now. I mean, I, I think it's it's like. It's always like a twofold thing, right? It's number one is like we didn't really have the internet back then, so yeah. we don't know what people are actually That's doing, true. right? People are showca- showcasing on social yeah. media what's going on. Uh, for example, there's a rapper that just you know passed away recently, Nipsey Hussle, who's, yeah. who's one of my biggest inspirations. And people talk about well, Pac talked about a lot, right? Tupac talked about a lot, but he didn't do as much for his community as somebody yeah. like Nipsey Hussle did, yeah. right? And I, I mean, I don't know. It's like a that's a very subjective thing to say. Yeah. You know, I I don't know that, but yeah. I do know Nipsey Hussle did put a lot of work in yeah. his community and you know yeah he is yeah. like a superhero for yeah. for crenshaw he's a superhero yeah. out in cali right like i think one portion of it maybe is that more hip-hop artists are coming into money now than they used to i mean there were really big ones back then but yeah. local ones didn't really have that much yeah. and yeah for sure i mean i think with the advent of technology and the yeah. internet it's different now right like somebody like me i can make money off music but maybe back then if i didn't have a major record deal i yeah. wouldn't be able to make anything off music right so yeah it's it's, it's it, you know it's a changing game where now i can directly con- connect with consumers yeah and i could have people come out and like oh i'll stream your album i'll buy yeah. your album i'll buy your merch and this and that yeah and I, there doesn't need to be a middleman right just, just hit me up on instagram at the real Shiroz, by the way <laughs> yeah or, or whatever you know just like so so i think it's i think it's different now yeah I, people are coming into more money and you know i you, you got to understand there's like people always complain about hip hop that like, you know, because what you hear on the radio is like, oh, I hate mumble rap. And yeah. This yeah. And that, right. You, I mean, if you know the origins of hip hop, it really started off. It was about the DJ and it yeah. started off as like a party. It's like party music. Right. It's just like fun, like something to get down to. Yeah. It didn't really become like super lyrical till like, you know, a couple of years in or yeah. whatever. Right. Like 
when guys like Nas were like the big thing in hip hop, right? Um, and by the way, it was just like the anniversary of Illmatic yesterday, I believe. So um, shout out to Nas, one of my biggest inspirations. <laughs> um, and so, you know, like I, I think it's it evolves. Uh, yeah, it evolves, it evolves. It changes, and it's also like, you know, there's yeah. always been that fun type of yeah. music. But but if you look like. You know, you can go on. You can go on the radio. You might hear somebody like, uh, like the Migos, or you might hear yeah. like Playboy Cardi, and you know, you might enjoy that music. Yeah. But then you could also go listen to, you know, uh, Nas or J Cole or yeah. Dr- or Drake or Kendrick Lamar, yeah. and th- that's your more lyrical content. And yeah. if you look at, like the top artists, the top selling artists are who Drake, J Cole, Kendrick Lamar, Chance the Rapper, like those guys mm-hmm. who are all considered like lyrical, like mm-hmm. meaningful artists, right? So. I don't know, I think it's usually overstated that yeah. you know like hip hop's being ruined by this yeah. or that and and it is cool to see even like the artists that that you know personally like I like maybe I don't even like that much right like maybe mm-hmm. I'll listen to a few songs but I'm not like a huge fan like I don't yeah. maybe like I think they're kind of whack or whatever but it's cool to see yeah. that um number one is like they're making money feeding their yeah. families helping out in their communities whatever whatever they can do and and even the beats like the beats are good like even if the rap is horrible generally yeah. the beats are pretty solid yeah i mean so a lot of it now is like there's like a thing that like somebody like tory lane said that like a lot of people just care about melodies and beats right yeah yeah so it is although me personally i think like all the beats starting to sound the same yeah because everyone just kind of like so if you yeah. really understand music like every like trap beat is just like the same rhythm of that like one yeah two three for and it's just like the same thing and you just change like a certain elements of it yeah. but it's all like the same pattern yeah. and stuff and i wanted to switch that up yeah. on my album um because i feel like everything just starts morphing into like this blob of like yeah because if you think about it right like you, you can talk to people and they'll tell you like i could play like 10 different artists and not tell you the names or what the names mm. of the songs or anything are and if you just listen to them back to back to back you probably couldn't differentiate between half the artists right? yeah definitely um and so i think that's what people complain about more than anything like you know like that's what people find like kind yeah. of annoying because like, everyone's yeah. kind of the same yeah um but, but in the end you know like the market will dictate it. like the market will push those people out like they might have their five minutes of fame yeah but they won't be here in the long term yeah exactly yeah. like a, a lot of these artists man like like i said those top artists yeah. like your like your kendrick lamar's yeah. and j cole's like at the end of the day those are the guys yeah. doing they sellout shows around yeah. the world right yeah um, and those mumble rappers that make you big off soundcloud or whatever yeah. Like, they're not as rich as they're telling you they are. They're not as rich as they're telling you are. And they're not big because of their music. They're big because they're Instagram personality. Yeah, their brand. Right? Whatever brand right, they the have. Brand it is. They're but that will like, end. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. I, I think there was one rapper. I Googled his net worth. He's he's considered, like, a SoundCloud rapper. Yeah. And, like, he's pretty big. Like, you see him everywhere. Yeah. His net worth is, like, a million, like, 1.2. Yeah. And, like, if you know money, a million is nothing. Is nothing. Like, yeah. people own houses for 1.2 in yeah. that local area, and their yeah. net worth is already bigger than this rapper that's on stage. Oh, yeah. There's probably people that you work with and go to yeah. school with that probably have a higher net worth. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if you add up all their assets and yeah. stuff, right? So, yeah. It's not like these guys are, you know, whatever. Maybe it's more money than they would have been making otherwise, so yeah. good for them. Yeah. Um, but, but, at the last, time, you know, but, like, but at the same time, I'm not, like, impressed by it. I, I've never been impressed by Like, I'm not, like... I'm not someone that's like easily impressed by like oh just because you make money like, yeah I don't really care because you know yo I mean? like money is like worth less now than like yeah. ever like yeah. think about it like if I say you oh I won like like, like a million dollars right you'll be like oh that's really awesome you get yeah. excited but like 50 years ago when you said that or yeah. 20 years ago when you said that like the whole something. room would be like yeah, yeah it meant something like it meant something and like I think what one of one of my things just in general and this is like be on my music or law school or whatever is like I, I personally i just judge success off happiness yeah that that's my new barometer for success yeah. right like anybody can make money anybody can do this anybody yeah. can do that anybody can show off their status what kind of degrees they got this mm-hmm. and that and then day you're not like a lot of people are depressed man you, you go on social media you see like memes of uh people like just like you know these like cathartic or like just very like self-deprecating memes about people yeah, talking yeah. about their depression and stuff yeah. like oh well you know uh, I'm gonna kill myself, but you know, I still gotta go to class or yeah, whatever. Yeah. This, I don't know, yeah. just stupid stuff like that. Yeah. You see it, you see it everywhere, man. Yeah. People aren't not happy at the end of the day, yeah. no matter how much money they're making. Yeah. So, you know, my my thing is like, I'm not really impressed by yeah. stuff like that. You know, what I mean, I might I might look up to like if there's somebody I respect, like I respect Jay Z and, and, yeah. and the kind of work he puts in and like admire certain business aspects of yeah. it. But I don't. I'm not looking up to Jay Z like, oh, he's you know, I, like 
I love them because of the money or because, because of, of money. No, I, I just like the work ethic, the strategy. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that like, it doesn't matter to me yeah. that he's worth 10 mil yeah. or a hundred mil. And law school teaches you that because you start coming in contact with people that have high net worths, right. worths but you see how much they work. You see yeah. their family life slowly falling apart. Yeah. So like that's a cautionary tale for people who are who want to go into big law. It's like, if you're going in, like you better know that like you're going to have to certain things in your life are going to have to kind of make way for big law. And you got to just be real with yourself and, if you're going in, like, know that well, things are going to change. Yeah. And it's like one of the things was like people like when you tell people you go to law school and people who are not that familiar with the law. Right. Or haven't been in the industry. They, they're like, oh, so what are you going to do? Corporate law? Big law? You yeah. work at a big law firm? Yeah. And I'm like, no, no, yeah. no. You know, <laughs> um, because because it's so overrated how, yeah. first of all, you got them. It's like working on Wall Street. Right. Yeah. A lot of these guys, like I, I have friends and family that work at like big law firms. And, you know, some so, like a few of them are happy. Some yeah. of them like it. It's because, doable. It's doable. But I would say the overwhelming majority are like, hate it because yeah. you're like, I'm working like 80, yeah. 90, 100 hours yeah. a week. I'm on call. Yeah. Partner hits me up. I got to be in the office. Yeah. Um, you like know, make I'm, sure it's doable for you. Don't sure. follow it just because the money yeah. or just because whatever and, it is. And the money is not even worth like if you if you after taxes, after, after your I mean, these places that pay a lot of money, generally yeah. their, their cost of living is really high oh yeah after taxes after that after your health care after you happen to buy prozac because your stress yeah. is getting too yeah. much and i mean and think about it too is if you break down the salary to hourly oh my god right? it's not yeah it's what's, what's the proportion of what are you making like 70 dollars an hour yeah. is that worth yeah. your sanity and your health and your happiness i wish that's what people kind of advertised uh, not yeah. how your salary but how yeah. much per hour yeah. like you, here, you get 180k but yeah yeah but you got to work like 180,000 hours for yeah. it. No, like whatever i'm just yeah. joking but yeah yeah like it's crazy and and like you mentioned too it's like so you know when, when you live in like in the new jersey new york area right it's like you're work probably like people are trying to work at big firms in new york yeah um and it's like okay you could work but you got to live you got to live in like midtown yeah all right you got to pay you got that oh, yeah. rent money yeah or you're not even gonna get to enjoy it because yeah. you'll be working the whole time yeah. but you got to pay for that yeah food living just expenses make sure it's there. what you want because sure the second you want. Yeah. like yeah. me like I, I i am gonna be working a big law yeah uh but that's because sell out. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> i love corporate law bro no, I, like I, it, yeah. I can't be litigation i can't yeah. go into a courtroom i can't do that uh so it works out that i like the area of law right. um but in terms of the money it wasn't my first thing like i went right. to a place i actually liked like right. i like the people i like their personalities yeah. but after you like it's gonna be in dc i'm right. working big law but the rent is like a place that's livable is like three grand. Right. I mean, that's double like what you yeah. can find in Jersey. Absolutely. So it all adds up. But why don't we get to a, to yeah. to a different question? Yeah. Um, what was the hardest part about balancing your career, your music career, with your lawyer career? Um, I would say just like when I first started law school because it's such a new thing and you don't understand the time commitment that's involved with that. I think the difference for somebody like me is I, I knew my priority and my priority was music, mm -hmm. and so I I made I made time for it. You know, like I made that the number one priority. I wasn't because i knew i didn't really want to work in big law and i didn't really care what my gpa was or whatever like i was like look i'm just here to learn something and get my degree and benefit whatever right like i, I know i'll make a great attorney if i wanted to yeah i don't need to sit in class and like yeah. spend a thousand hours studying like whatever yeah. like anything i learn i'm gonna learn in the real yeah. world right and so um it does take some sacrifice though for sure uh number one skill time management uh one thing i'm good at is when i am doing multiple things which i usually am I learn how to budget my time. Right? Yeah. So if that means I got to wake up early one day and get X amount of work done for school so I can free up time at night to have a recording session. Cool. I mean, like first, first year was tough for me. I mean, because number uh, one, you're taking the worst. First year is the worst. I mean, just, just doing law school by yeah. itself is tough. Right. Yeah. And it's like, you know, number one, trying to learn how to do a law school exam. You have this one big exam at yeah. the end of the semester. You're not used to that. You're not used to your entire yeah. grade reflect, uh, yeah. being dependent on one final. And so what happened is like, so, Anybody that knows me, I don't, you know, like I go out, I have fun. I don't drink or anything. And it's, you know, that's a big part of the law school culture. But yeah. like I would, you know, like, you know, let's say everybody was going to the bar or whatever after after yeah. the final, like I'll, I'll, I'll come through for a bit, but then I'm out. I wasn't yeah. stressed about like, you know, that also yeah. meant me sacrificing time in my social life. Yeah. First year, yeah. especially because that meant like Friday night when all my friends are going out somewhere or just hanging out, whatever. It's like sometimes I gotta be like, nah, I can't make it. Yeah. Right. And they're like, yeah, why? That's the hardest part. I, I got a session. I, I'm I'm in the studio all night. And like I have a home studio, which is dope. Yeah. Um, I have my own setup. But yeah. you know, some there'd be there'd be nights where I would have class till like, you know, even like second year would have yeah. I wouldn't get home till like eight PM, right? Yeah. So I'm up from like 
8, 9 a.m. Yeah. I don't get home till like 8 or 9 p.m. I eat dinner. Um, and then I go straight into like writing or recording music. Yeah. And sometimes I'll be like work. I'll re- and I, my recording process process sometimes takes long because I'm a perfectionist mm-hmm. and I, I do everything. I'll take like a hundred takes of like one verse if I have to, until I get it the way I want. Yeah. And so from like 9 PM when I'm home after I'm done eating dinner or whatever, 10 PM, I'm recording yeah. sometimes to like two in the morning. And how did you yeah. balance? So, like, law school could be a really poisonous environment. Yeah. Uh, so, for those listening, if you're going to law school, yeah. the drama doesn't end, the cliques don't end. Oh yeah, it's people like, are just as immature as they were in college. It's in like high middle school. school, man. It's horrible it's, in that sense. It's worse than college. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. In college, everyone's kind of excited that they're adults. So like, yeah. people are generally happier. Yeah. But in law school, like everyone's miserable and there's drama and yeah. there's cliques. So. It's, such a, it's such a toxic, intense environment, especially yeah. like towards the end of yeah. the semester. And yeah. I mean, my main thing was like, I just stay away from it. Yeah. Like I, I I literally, like if you, anybody that knows me in law school, like I'm friendly with everybody. Yeah. I'm cool. With, like, everyone's whoever. super cool, like right. individually. Right, right. You know, it, it's, it's when like the, the pressure collect- comes in. Yeah, exactly. The whole collective, you know? Yeah, I just... um. I just, I was just in and out, you know, like I I wasn't like part of like clubs and stuff. I wasn't doing like extra curricular activities. I wasn't trying to hang out with like, I had my group of friends from day one, Mm -hmm. you know, I had people like you uh, and like Nicole and like other people who I was just like, you know, shout out to Nicole Morgan. Shout out to Nicole Morgan. (laughs) Happy birthday to Nicole Morgan. Her birthday is, uh, we're recording here on She was your real ride or die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like the OG ride or die. That that was the OG ride or die because we had every class together too. Um, And uh, we just, we just hit it off since like day one. Yeah. And so we had all our classes together, but me and her had like a similar mindset. We're like, yo, we're not trying to get caught up in what everybody else is doing. Yeah. Like I'm not, we're not trying to sit in the library while people are like stressed Uh, out. I think it's too. People will study in the library and most time they're just talking and yeah, chatting. Not studying. like like they'll study for five hours but only like an hour and a half or two hours would be actually con- like oh, real no i would be like all right like we sometimes we would study for final i'd be like and i don't like studying with big groups of people and yeah, stuff like either. it would be like just me and nicole would just study and yeah. i'd be like all right let's go to let's go to like intrinsic cafe let's get some bubble tea and just yeah. like relax and yeah. study and um that was it and it worked and it like it worked for for me mm-hmm. it worked for her and that's just I had my like core group of friends of like couple handful of friends mm-hmm. that I would interact with on the regular. Yeah. Like, you know, like I would hit you up about stuff or like, yo, I'm stressed out about this exam or yeah. whatever. Like, yo, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, l- let's go grab lunch or whatever. Yeah. Right. Like I had my core group of friends yeah. to do that with and that I would actually, there's like very few people that I actually hang out with on the yeah. regular outside. Of, and it wasn't like, you know, I wasn't like maliciously or no. like trying to look for it's, that. It's just, it's so, prioritizing. Yeah. It's, it's prioritizing things in your life that bring value. It doesn't mean that there's no other value out there. Right. But at the same time, like if you want to follow your passion, you need to prioritize. Absolutely. And in a lot of sense, like you could, you could do law school while having a passion as, as you show, as you showed right. everyone, you could do anything while doing law school, yeah. but you got to prioritize. Like you said, if, if, if you have to wake up early, wake up early. I mean, life is limited. Yeah. Life is like, if you're lucky, you have 70 to 80 years. If yeah. above that, it's like, that's like just complete yeah. and utter luck. And there's people yeah. who smoke their whole life and they're yeah. like a hundred. So clearly being healthy doesn't guarantee you a hundred nah, years. There's, there's no, there's no guarantee. Yeah. So you can't like, you, you got to make the best of whatever yeah. situation you're in and try yeah. to find a way to make it good. And, and one, one thing I would say that I was really good at, uh, like one of, one of my good skills, at least with school is that I don't get stressed out Yeah, much, you know, like, I, that I, I was jealous. Yeah. Yeah. I was really jealous about that with you. Cause, I, because like even the most stressful times you're like, <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I mean, like, we'll see what happens. Yeah. And, you know, I'm just there, I like, mean, <laughs> it's just because, like, it's because what I do is I put in the work and I, I schedule and whatever. And yeah. I, 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 I do whatever I have to do. Yeah. And then the rest to yeah. me is just like, that's I, up to God and the I, universe. You know, I, I learned think. that, too. Like, my yeah. 2L and 3L were much more chill. Oh, yeah. And, like, that's just something you got to learn. Like, at the oh. end of the day, like, this test isn't going to end you. Nah. But you had it from the beginning. No, I, the problem was I had, like, the I had the... So your last year of law school is so your three L year, which we like to call three L O L. Yeah, you know. Uh, but I I had like that senioritis since like day one, <laughs> and it was it was it was partly because obviously like I'm prioritizing so much time to music that, you know, that's that's like I'm not as stressed to like you know oh like I have to get an A yeah, plus yeah, you know yeah. like I I, I don't have that mentality. I'm just like yeah. Yeah. like I'm doing all right you know yeah. whatever. And the less yeah. stressed I am, the better I do. For sure, for sure. And, like I tell everyone who goes to law school, like from your day one. 
think about alternatives for you like yeah. like what if you don't get that a like what if yeah. you don't get that b like what if you fail like think of those alternatives because you'll automatically get more calm you know like, like this, you could always start your own practice you could right. always do whatever go to a small firm go to a big firm like create alternatives so that in the day you're not dependent on one grade oh, that, that, that's smart and like yo trust me like so many people who want to like do like big law for example put so much pressure on themselves oh my god yo there there's kids yeah. without a doubt who knew the material more than me yeah who studied hundreds of yeah. hours more than me yeah right but they ended up doing worse on the exam because yeah. they're stressed out and they psyched themselves out my worst grade my worst classes my 1l were my best grades yeah literally like it, yeah. it always flopped you yeah. know like it always was, was, was like a different it was it's crazy yeah no it's, it's sometimes it just works out like i'm luck I'm, everything bro yeah, i mean even last semester i took a class which i took pass fail and like in our school you you you, you can set like a grade where if you yeah. get that grade you keep that grade on your transcript yeah and um you know i took a class where this this was this was my last final of law school, right? Because because this semester I don't have any finals, but um, like I remember I was taking the exam and I'm like, I know you know, I, I didn't <laughs> yeah. study that hard, but I just like kind of like I, I studied like whatever the amount I needed to study, right? Yeah, to I was know like, the material. Yeah, to know the material. I'm like, all right, I'll at least pass, right? Yeah, like that yeah, was yeah. my mentality. Yeah. And I ended up doing well on the exam. And the crazy thing is, when I was taking the exam, you know, I was I was finished. I was like you know, I close, close my laptop, whatever, you know, I'm, I'm going up to like drop my paper in and, and I just see mad heads turning at me <laughs> like with like faces yeah, of like yeah, disgust yeah. and shock at the same time. And, and I'm looking around and then when I drop my thing, my test in, I realized that I'm the first person to finish the test. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, damn, either I did really <laughs> poorly or I'm just very confident. And I just, uh, you know, I did all right. And yeah, yeah. it's just funny. Cause like people are still like, like people are like, Oh, like when you did that, that stressed yeah. me out. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, yeah. but like worry about, your, you know, like, yeah. Why are you controlling yeah. probably the number one skill in law school, I would say, is like controlling stress. Yeah, that, that 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 might be like the number one skill because you can study as much as you want. And I'm not saying like be like completely stress free oh, to the point course. where you're just yeah. like, you know, yeah. there's that. But thing also know yourself. Like, don't try to fit yourself in some mold where you have to study nine hours a day. Like right. if you could absorb something in two hours, right. then it's kind of counterproductive for you to be there for six hours and you could be doing other things. I'll, t- I'll you tell know? you right now, I have a friends like everybody's stressed about studying for the bar right even yeah. myself included a little bit but everyone's like man i'm gonna have to study like 10 hours a day and this and that it's like no you're not you're not, you're you're not. Number, number one is like number one when most people say they're studying half the time they're like checking their oh phone or doing this or that me i know myself right yeah. I, I can only study in short spurts and yeah. then i give myself a reward like yeah. right, i'll study like i'll sit here for like 30 45 minutes i'll study this chapter no matter how long it takes or however long it takes me i'll yeah. set a goal once I finish this, I'm going to go get a snack. I'm yeah. going to go eat something, whatever. That's how I study. Yeah. And that works for me. And I'm not even like for the bar exam, like, you know, we'll, we'll find out if it works or not. But yeah. I'm not planning to just, oh, I'm just going to sit in the library yeah. for 10 hours. That's yeah. just not how I study, right? That's not how I retain If you did well throughout law school, nothing is yeah. different about the bar. And also yeah. the bar, it's even less pressure in reality yeah. because, yeah, like you need a pass to obviously right. be a lawyer. But you also don't need an A. You don't need a B. Yeah. You just need a pass. Yeah, worst case, you yeah. got a JD. So, like, you know what I mean? You can still get yeah. a job. You don't, maybe yeah. you're not an attorney. But I just like, <laughs> see, that's. And I'm like, that's what you need to have like that. You need to be able to create those backup plans. We're like, look, you're human. You're okay. You'll survive. You'll still thrive no matter what you you do. As long as you have a passion, you're in a great position, right? Like you got it. Yo, you have a JD, you have a three year jurist doctorate. Like worst case, you don't pass the bar. Worst case. You can probably get a job and compete with people that have MBAs yeah. for other positions or I, work in compliance. I mean, compliance, or compliance yeah. income is fantastic. Yeah, and you can make six figures. Yeah, yeah. off the so, bat. So, like, you know, like you said, I think that's a good strategy. And I guess I do that without even thinking about it, which is that you create your backup plan. Not saying, like, not saying, like, you know, you're, you have plan B and C. Yeah. And you're just relying on those. But of you're, course. but it helps limit your stress knowing yeah. the world is not going to come crashing yeah. in on me or end just yeah. because because yeah. of a test and you your know? worst fear generally like it won't happen you know right. like very rarely does your worst nightmare happen so i think setting those um alternatives kind of helps you do that you know because i feel a lot like a lot of law students go um oh if i don't get an a i can't get into big law yeah. my life is over really like yeah. really like is making 140 not as good is one making oh, 120 not as your good life and then, is, like, over? is it really over damn you know you got a three-year degree and a pro- and hundred thousand yeah. dollar prospect yeah. like damn, it's like, that's, huh. a t- that's, that's a that's <laughs> a that's that's a first world privilege right yeah, there, right? Exactly. That's, so hundred percent. So what would you give? Um. So yeah. do you have advice for someone that wants to go to law school or is in law school that has a passion yeah. that they want to pursue? I think um number one is like I I can speak for it for myself. So whatever your like for me, I was interested in music, right? So first thing is find a professors or faculty members that might know about that field, right? That have access to that field. 
develop a relationship and a bond with them because they're going to be able to give you guidance on like, yo, maybe you should take these classes. Maybe you should do this. Maybe you should intern here. Or, hey, I know somebody. You should go to this event. You know, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like where a guy like Professor Kettle is instrumental in helping me uh, navigate those. Worlds. And like Rutgers Law doesn't have a lot of, you know, we're, we're, we're like yeah. very like pri- uh, public interest focused. Yeah. So we don't have a lot of those resources. So, but we're lucky at least to have somebody like Professor Kettle who can guide students who are interested in those things. Right? Yeah. And so like for me, like music and sports is very interesting to me. So I try to take classes that were relevant to those things. Um, I just, you know, for me, I'm more concerned with real life experience. Yeah. Like even forget the classroom, like try to intern somewhere. Yeah. That's relevant to your field. Yeah. Talk to people in that field. You might be like one of the few people that's like trying to navigate in it. So it's not you're not gonna be able to find like the cookie cutter Mm -hmm. uh like model like you're not gonna go to your career services office and be like hey can you get me i'm interested in film can you just find me an internship at sony no i mean i honestly applying for most of these things online doesn't even work it's like it's all connection based yeah so you got to go to networking events you got to reach out to people you got to users like you got to find faculty members and professors that have contacts that have worked in those industries that might know somebody like that's what it takes. Yeah. And that's in a, a lot of fields. You got to network. Yeah. And so, you know, I didn't have any, I didn't have like music connects like that. Like when I was coming into law school, yeah. I made those connects to be able to wor- work at a major mm-hmm. label and stuff like that. So I would say that's, so I would say those, are, those would be like my main points. Yeah. And um, yeah, just, just try to find whatever avenues to network in those fields that you can. And then, and, and just try to think of, okay, how does the law impact whatever thing I'm interested oh, yeah. in? For sure. Right. I mean, for me, uh, I built three LLCs for myself in the last year and a half. My, so I didn't need to hire an attorney, you know, because right. like I, I worked in that from, I had experience in that, you know, uh, I have two friends in law school that are also starting their own businesses. Like one's creating a really cool board game yeah. and he started the LLC. He created the website. Yeah. I mean, like find someone else who, who wasn't forced to learn or yeah. forced to grow in law school. I mean, law school just teaches you how to just yeah. do what you want and figure out how to do it. Like have a goal yeah. and law school will help you figure out how to get there. Yeah. And, and you'll learn things like, me too. Like I created, I created my own um, entertainment company. Yeah. And I, lo- I, I did all the LLC filing myself. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, and, and things you also develop as you're in school, you'll develop a network of attorneys. Yeah. So I have friends that, yeah, I don't go to school with them or whatever. And I'm not even like work with them in that capacity, yeah. but I can hit them up if I'm like, yo, I just need yeah. some advice. Like, yo, where should Very I go true. for this? We yeah. go for that. Like, and people generally look out if yeah. they're cool. You know, I so, went to Professor Kettle like last week to talk yeah. about an uh, issue I, I thought might pop up with, uh, with contributors for this other business um right. and yeah like that's priceless i mean that's cost like 400 bucks to like talk yeah. to an attorney about Dan, like, so you owe professor kettle 400 yeah. bucks no, <laughs> oh, man. Um, nah, but yeah you're right no nah, it's it's just like price of information that you learn and, and then um and, and you know you, you can pass that forward too so yeah. like when you learn those things always like, pass it forward when, when i when i learn something if you know other law students are like hey I, yeah. you know i need help creating an llc or whatever yeah. i'm like well look these are the resources oh yeah you can go exactly through our, our yeah. school clinics or whatever yeah and um and, and just being able to guide people who are interested in those fields yeah because i've had people i have friends who are like you know in law school that are like yo how do i get in at a, like a record label or something i'm like look man it's just connection based. like you yeah. can't like you're not gonna go online and apply for a job yeah. like they don't check that stuff it's just not that kind of industry mm-hmm. so um that's like information you can pass forward that yeah you know hopefully now that i have it i can teach other people about it yeah, man. So tell us uh, a little bit about your album and your inspiration. Yeah. So um, so this is my debut studio album. It's called 92 Futuristic. Uh, I, was, I was born in 92 and I'm really inspired by 90s music and culture. And so um, the album for me was I wanted to make something really different. I wanted to make something I wanted to put out. Yo, I worked on this album for probably like about a year. It's only eight songs, but I worked on it for about a year mm-hmm. because I wanted to make it perfect. I, I like, yo, I put, I, I really put like my heart and soul into the album and so many countless hours, um, you know, shout out, shout out to my producers, Ramiz and Dean who put in, my cousins that put in a lot of, like put in a lot of work on this album as mm-hmm. well. And, and, and so the album for me was like, all right, well, I, I really love like nineties hip hop and R and B. Like, you know, I grew up on like Nas and Jay-Z and whatever. And then I also... I actually do like a lot of the modern stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And so how do I take that type of substance and content and blend it with like a modern, um, with like a modern style, right? Mm-hmm. And so my album, you'll hear, t- so every song is completely different, but you'll hear a tone of like, like, like I have a dance hall record on my album. I have a funk record. Yeah. I have like just more like gritty hip hop records. Yeah. I have, 
So I like it's kind of all over yeah. the place. I have like deep. Dark That's what R&B. I love about your music, actually. Yeah. Like your new album, uh, a lot of songs are different than um, the um, the Rose Without a Thorns. That was, yeah, that, no rose, in, no in rose, rose without, without thorns. thorns. Yeah, like very different than like yeah. certain uh, certain songs you're putting in. So yeah. I like the fact that you kind of you don't constrain yourself to a certain yeah. thing. You you. Your music is Shiro's. Yeah. You know? Like, that's what your genre is. Yeah. I don't, like, I, it's funny, like, one of my friends said to me, like, you're, like, you hate the idea of being boxed in. And I'm yeah. like, you're right. Like, I, like, when people try to label me, I, I fight against it because yeah. even my music, like, that was my first project. No Rose Without Thorns was my first project after I'd taken a break for a few years um, and hadn't really put out anything, right? And that was for me just getting back in the flow. And that's more of like a traditional hip hop album. Mm-hmm. Even within that, I tried to experiment more. And then after getting that under my belt, now I was like back to like a state where I'm really comfortable. Yeah. And I was in a new position where my skills are more refined. Like I worked on my ability to sing over the past few years mm-hmm. and I was able to showcase that on this album. Um, And I'm and I don't just listen to hip hop, you know, like I like I love like Af- Afro pop and Caribbean dance hall and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I was like, all right, let me infuse those elements in my music. I listen to just random like genres of music. I was listening to like random like electric european grunge music yeah uh kind of like uh like kanye's uh yeezus album and i was just inspired by stuff that i was like how do i implement elements of that music into shout mind, out right? to kanye shout out to kanye yeah <laughs> and the future uh, lawyer kim kardashian uh, yeah me so guys if you didn't know me and kim kardashian are opening up a law firm together <laughs> so it's, you know it's, it's called the uh, it's called the ammo then the kardashian law group <laughs> Uh, it's called gonna, Yeezy and, and Associates. Yeezy, Yeezy and Associates <laughs> opening soon. Um, no, nah, I'm just kidding. Shout out to Kim Kardashian, though. Yeah. That's cool. I think that's cool. Hey, I think. do everything. Yeah. I mean, why not? It, why it, Life is so short, you yeah. know? Like, if you're going to do it, do it. Like, you shouldn't get hate for just doing something. Yeah. No, I, I see a lot of people are like, oh, man, I got to switch fields and stuff. Yeah. I'm like, man, first of all, you got to realize she comes from her dad. Her daddy was a lawyer. Yeah. Like, she comes from that. Like, if she wants yeah. to go to law school, she's been doing some yeah. cool criminal justice reform yeah. work and getting people out. She's done yeah. more, I think, than, yeah. like, a lot of people out. She's done more than a lot of attorneys, I know. Yeah. But, and, and, like, yeah. say what you want about it, but I th- I think that's yeah. cool. So, I, I, yeah. I support it. Yeah. Um, And then just, yeah, going back to the album, I yeah. mean, like, you know, uh, so I wanted to combine all those elements and not limit it to just, like, only, like, a rap album. And even though that's, like, my bread and butter and that's the foundation, I, I didn't want to limit it to just that. And so, I honestly feel that this is the best album of 2019 yeah like I, and I, i've had people coming up to me saying like yo man i was listening to their album and like i don't want you to take this a bad way or anything but this sounds like something like a major artist like a big time artist yeah. would put out like that's the quality of yeah. the music i'm like i don't take that yeah. negatively like i mean maybe a little but no yeah. i mean i take it positively <laughs> in the sense that like yeah the quality of work is that good yeah and and, and to me like i really you gotta be confident in your work and i put in so much time and effort into this music that i'm like listen kendrick lamar could put out an album j cole could put out an album drake could put out an album i still think my album is the best album this year yeah i haven't heard an album this year that's better than it and yeah. i'm being like uh, like just speaking objectively yeah. like I, like i actually feel that way and i know a lot of people that have been supporting it actually feel that way and now it's really just about getting an exposure and getting people to listen to it that haven't heard about me yet and and that's the plan that's why i kept this short there's no uh there's no skits there's no like filler tracks or anything every track every second yeah. on the album has a purpose which is way better than having like a 13 20 yeah. song out al- you know song album and like half of it stuff you never even click play pe- on yeah, people you know why people do like those long albums like those 20 track albums and stuff they do it because everyone's going to listen to the album once through at least right yeah. like not everyone but most people are going to listen to it once yeah. through and now every song that gets listened to that's a stream oh yeah boom streaming yeah. numbers are boosted yeah um uh, I had the idea of doing an eight track, seven, eight track album before Kanye and good music started the whole like seven track thing. Mm-hmm. And they did that because seven, I guess, lets you qualify for a Grammy or that's like the minimum amount for mm-hmm. an album. Um, and it's tougher because you have to rely on people replay value. You have to rely on yeah. people replaying the album for it yeah. to get streamed. And I was like, well, look, if my album is good enough, people are going to replay it. Yeah. So I've been getting a whole lot of love on this album. Like it's crazy. I've gotten, I've had people tell me like, Yo, Plasma Cannon is like the best song I've heard yeah. in a while. Or like, I haven't heard yeah. Agua yet, but I've heard great things. Oh from, man, but Agua, gotta, I haven't heard it yet. Agua, Agua is like the little <laughs> Agua is like the da- Agua is the jam right now. That's like that's that's the summer anthem. That's yeah, gonna yeah. be every club you go to, every party you go to. People are just gonna be yeah. Did you like Agua. So um, that's that's gonna be the the summer wave. I got probably shoot a music video for it in the summer or something. But yeah. I, I was actually really happy about that record too because you know it, it was the last record I made for the album and. At first, I was like, man, y'all, like, I really love this, like, dance. Like, I listen to it all the time, right? So I'm like, 
man, why can't I make it? Right. And, and it's like, you're scared because you're like, shoot, it might come off as kind of corny or like forced or whatever. And I made it. And once, once the record started progressing and I, and I rewrote it like two or three times because yeah. I wasn't happy with it at first. And when I finally got it, how I wanted, I started showing like a few of my friends, a few, few people, just like r- random people. I would show it to them and people were just bump into it. And I was like, yo, you know what? I think I got a hit here. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, it was cool because another thing of like facing your fears of stepping outside of the box you know you can't be you can't worry so much about criticism yeah. and on this album the, this is the first time where i was just kind of like yo honestly i don't care what people think i'm gonna make music that i yeah. want to make that i want to listen to yeah right yeah. if i make that i'm gonna end up putting out a better product which yeah. is what happened so um you know people people have been loving it and like yo it's just like stepping like to see myself like step out of my comfort zone was awesome to me see myself be able to sign a deal this year that you know is, although it's not crazy it's going to pro- you know, possibly lead to something much bigger. Yeah. And um, just seeing that I built something from the ground up, grassroots, you know, I built it. Yeah. Like it's mine, right? Yeah. Like this music, like like me, my producers, like we built this music. Yeah. Uh, and so like to me, that's cool. And and I and I did it with like my family, like my, my cousins are my producers. And so we're able to kind of bond and spend time together. Like it's just family bonding too at the end of the day, right? Yeah. It's not like I'm just working with some random people. Yeah. And now it's like, well, now, now if this album does well, like, they did an album that did well too, yeah, right? Yeah. Like they have something out there in the world. Now they have something to build towards and whatever yeah. opportunities I get are open to them mm-hmm. as well. So, you know, if I'm performing here or there, their name's with me, you know, like, yeah. so the opportunities are endless and anything I do, I like to have people that I care about attached to it 100%. and to benefit from it. Yeah. So that was kind of one of my motivations uh, with the album. So I'm, I'm just, I'm honestly just really happy with the final product. Should be. You know, and I, I think it's amazing. And I got all these flyers. We're just going to be throwing all <laughs> around Newark, New Jersey. Yeah, and, yeah. And New Brunswick at, at the colleges and stuff. So, um, yeah, that that so that's pretty much the album, man. It, it's just like, yeah. yo, like if you, if, you know, if, if you haven't heard it yet, uh, you can, if you have Apple Music, Spotify, mm-hmm. Tidal, SoundCloud, YouTube, whatever you use to listen to music. You're on there. Yeah. Just search up Shiroz, S-H-A-H-R-O-Z, yeah. or just type in 92 Futuristic. That's the name of the album, and you'll have you know you access to to the whole album there. I really hope you all check it out. Yeah, um, It's only like a 24-minute runtime total on the whole album. So it's a short album you can listen to like on one commute to work or school yeah. or whatever. Um, like, please check it out. Please share it with your friends and family. Like, you know, I put so much work into this. And I, it's not that I care about the numbers and stuff. I actually want people to enjoy to the enjoy music. what you're putting out, yeah. to enjoy the passion you're trying to yeah. show people, right? Like, it's I, value you're being you're bringing to people, right? Yeah, that man. motivation and, and, and everything. Like, and like people don't realize that artists like myself, like you don't realize how much time goes into the music yeah. that we make, yeah. right? Like we put hours and hours and hours and hours and hours into this craft for things that make you happy yeah. and that you have unlimited replay value. It's yeah. not like you're eating a burger and then boom, you yeah. eat it and it's gone. Yeah. You know, no, it's music you constantly consume. Yeah. Like, so whoever, whether it's me or any other artist that you really like, like, please like support, you yeah. know, stream their stuff, yeah. buy their merch, yeah. go to their shows. Um, You know, what what's, what's like, you know, I forgot what song it is, but J. Cole talks about like, you know, you, you spend like ten dollars on, on like fast food, but you can't spend it on my CD. You know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. it's it's just like music yo. brings value. I mean, I said this a million yeah. times. Like I've episode just on using music as therapy. Yeah. Uh, and like literally, like if you're feeling down and you listen to a song that brings you up, yeah. what's that cost value to you? I mean, people pay hundreds for yeah. therapists that can't do what music could do. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. I mean, and by the way, speaking of music therapy, if you don't know, there's just a cool random tidbit that popped in my head, <laughs> which is the, the Ottoman Empire used to in their <laughs> hospitals. No, it's serious. I know random things. I know I know some random things. All right, shoot. The the Ottoman Empire, uh, they used to have like in their hospitals. They, they Your used album to, pumping, right? I'm album pumping. <laughs> nah, they didn't have my album pumping because I wasn't born yet. <laughs> but if they did, it would probably create some great therapy. Uh, but what they did was they would actually use music as therapy. For, yeah. And it would it, it would speed up people's healing. Yeah. So so music is therapeutic. It's timeless. It's, it's timeless. It, it can be timeless. It's you know it has an unlimited value. So, you know, please support it, whether it's me or any other artist, but definitely support me and my (laughs) album, 92 Futuristic, out now. So, Sounds good. Uh, What song should we close out um, out on? I really like Chicken Spot. Is that possible? Yeah, we could, we could, we could, we could rock with Chicken Spot or Agua. Uh, Which one do you prefer? See, Um, I feel like we pumped up Agua, so they're going to listen to it no matter what. Okay. Um, Yeah, we could. So Chicken Spot is, uh, Chicken Spot is 
the single off the album actually we have a music video out for it. if you go on youtube and just type in shiro's chicken spot or youtube.com slash shiro's um that was like a fun fun record for me yeah because it's just a very like dry sarcastic yeah. humor i was never... expecting that yeah. you know you... like i wasn't expecting that to come out yeah so when it did i actually liked it a lot because yeah. very much different than a lot of other yeah i i was like let me put out something that people won't expect yeah if you a lot of my prior music from this album is like more serious and it's more kind of like thought provoking yeah uh, not not to say that even like this record isn't thought provoking yeah. but it's just more of like a different tone and style yeah. for me that you wouldn't expect it's also applicable yeah. to everyone i mean uh when i lived in Newark, i had yeah. um like a lot of paderias they started yeah. to go to at night i was having yeah. bunch of and different brazilian stuff yeah. although your thing is called chicken spot what yeah. you're talking about is a place where people go to like gather it's it's yeah. every community has this especially yeah. i mean like i grew up in Newark, and man like yeah. i had a bunch of chicken spots that weren't chicken spots you know right 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 yeah the chicken spot is like bigger than just the chicken spot yeah. right it complies to a lot of things and it's more of just where people go at night and gather together and share like amazing moments and stories and, yeah. and, and love together so um, yeah, that's what it represents, man. And it was just cool for me because it was another thing stepping outside of the box. I never made like a funny, sarcastic, dry humor type record before. Yeah. So I, I tried it for the first time. It came out dope. Uh, yeah. Me and my cousin, we made that record in like, in like, we made that beat in like 20 minutes. Like yeah. it was crazy. Like we we're just all together just working on music and it just kind of happened really organically. Yeah. And so, yeah, I'm really proud of that record. So, yeah, you get, you know, and here's Chicken Spot. Sounds good. All right, man. Yo, thanks for coming. You're always welcome, man. Yo, appreciate it, Chris. Thank you for having me. Uh, if you guys haven't subscribed to the DMGH podcast, <laughs> please do so. Right here, you know, uh, Chris has been, this is an awesome podcast, um, getting a whole unique perspective from somebody that did go to law school, but it opens you up to other fields from depending on the guests and stuff. So, yo, guys, just support it. I mean, that's like <laughs> you see somebody putting in. I, I'm a firm believer in people supporting uh other people's passions yes you know yeah. do it like it doesn't yeah. cost you anything to it literally really cost nothing it costs nothing 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 literally like 10 seconds every time like yeah. me going on your page getting her album promoting yeah. that stuff yeah like it's great music nonetheless yeah. but the effort that it takes yeah. for you to actually support someone's dream someone's dream minimal yeah it's very minimal and likewise what does it take for someone to go on your page and like watch some of your podcasts yeah. you know, or listen to some of your podcasts yeah. like while they're driving to school or work one day yeah. you know just checking it out so um yeah but thank yeah, you yeah thank you and i'm not paying him to, to say this he no, did not I did this not. is this is <laughs> ad free Hash, this is no hashtag ad content so yeah all right man thank Thanks you chris again. and uh yeah it's been a pleasure man all right i'll see you soon all right guys good. talk to you later hey guys i hope you enjoyed this episode if you liked it leave a five stars and a review on apple Podcasts. you can also follow me on instagram soundcloud and youtube and google play podcast i'm in the kitchen whipping like a chicken spy Keep it spicy now, everything I spit is hot. Flow butter bread coming out the toaster hot. Host the rock, I'm the goat when I take a shot. You rappers trash full of fat and some mixed meat. I'm a king, treat your queen like my side piece. Big thighs with my fries and she like me. Looking at me crazy while she's sipping on my ice.